Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to the Living for a Living podcast. I'm your host, Joey Bradley. Today's guest I'm very excited about. Me and him go way back. Probably one of my oldest friends that I'm still in contact with today. And growing up was one of the best athletes I'd ever been around. Unfortunately, had some hip issues throughout his career, which kind of shut his collegiate basketball career short. But now he's turned it around and is affecting the game from the sideline coaching multiple teams but he's right now the head coach at the Bellevue High School for the women's team and then also running the Eastside Basketball Club AAU program and doing some things there in addition to at Bellevue as a coach that I think in my opinion is next level in terms of not just coaching kids on the court but worrying about them off the court and also giving them tools and things to use in life moving forward after sports are over and to me that's that's really really important uh with no further ado my next guest nick crossan and just a little background is this is actually kind of part two of the interview i'm still new to the podcast game not trying to make any excuses, but I messed up and somehow didn't record the first part with the, uh, didn't record with the microphones through the first part, first maybe 50 minutes of our conversation until I finally noticed. And so if you want to check out that part one, it's right here on YouTube as well, but some people I know don't like the bad audio, so I'm, I split them up into two parts. Here's part two with some good audio. I hope you guys enjoy. The world feels uncomfortable, but now make it something from nothing. Now it's recording. He's <laughs> even doing that. For no reason, bro. I love it. Oh, I man. love it. Oh, yeah. So I realized about what we've been going for about an hour now. Yeah. But I wasn't recording the audio through the mic. So we've been just using them as props. And so they look good, though. They look good. Now, now, <laughs> now we're, we're, we know what we're doing. Now I know what I'm doing. Oh, man. But hey, it's real. Hey, you know, it's real. That's what the beauty of it is. All right. Let's let's continue. <laughs> now Now that we got the audio going, or maybe we're starting. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, you've, you've talked a lot this last little segment kind of about the family and mm. your wife and how everything came to be with her. And, yeah. You know, and like I said in the beginning, it's cool to me because... Like our lives are on the surface very different, right? You know, married, three kids, and the opposite of that, I don't know, you know, is right. me. And but then we come together and we vibe so well on everything, everything else, basically, you know. And and so it's cool. Um, and I think you know you're one of my few friends that you know have kids at a fairly young age and right. have have been the young dad growing up and having to maneuver life mm -hmm. you know with that and you know to me i respect that a lot because i can't fathom myself doing it basically um what what's been you know like as a dad now yeah. you know kind of what's kind of your outlook how have things changed from before you know i'm asking kind of for myself really right. here is like what's something you've really noticed change about yourself now being a father yeah you know not just one now you got three little ones running around right right um it i mean it, they're all blessings uh, it's like you know when i was didn't have kids people would always talk about like like i just can't describe right I have kids like yeah. it's hard to like when you're there in the hospital and your wife is delivering a baby you can't explain it yeah like and it's true like the the joy of like seeing that process um is like incredible like so my wife and i she got pregnant uh actually with our first one uh to didn't make it long um mm -hmm. she, we had lost that one okay uh, in an opt eptopic uh pregnancy so okay. she was god what was she like three months or so for maybe not that long about three months or so yeah pregnant mm -hmm. um 
and pretty much the baby got stuck in the tube and you know it was pretty much that was it they had to take it was a it was like the worst experience i've ever been a part of yeah and see my like your wife go through that was crazy like yeah. she was puking she couldn't walk she was oh, damn. um there was just so many things and when you see like your wife go through that and then you see her like come right through it and just have a baby yeah you're like whoa like that kind of stuff is it's like empowering like so just when you get to hold your own kid it's like shocking at first and kind of it's nerve-wracking like yeah it's kind of like oh, like you talk about it like <laughs> In the moment, you're like, yeah, you know, we're having a baby, you know, and then all of a sudden it's in your hand. You're like, ooh, like this is real. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm having a baby. Like this <laughs> is my, here. Yeah. Here it is, yeah. you know. So just it's it's made me be a better person. Mm -hmm. um, it's made me look at life like way differently. It's made me a better business person. Um, it, 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 there's no negative yeah. to it. Like yeah. um, it's – is it hard? Yeah, it's hard. Like if anyone says, if anyone says that, that, I mean – Tell me what you're doing because I would love to know <laughs> how you make it easy, you know. Um, so it's it's hard, um, but it's very rewarding yeah. um, just to see, you know, them every day, you know, they wake up, they smile, they laugh. You know, it's like for me, you know, I, I lose a game, a Friday night game, and I come home that game goes away pretty quickly right you know um so if i didn't have a kid i had been beating myself up probably the whole till i had practice again yeah so it just it's just a different aspect of life yeah it's 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 really cool it's really cool so yeah no it's it's like i said that's something i think eventually i want it just the the idea right now isn't there for me and for so sure. it's, it's cool to just see and kind of almost really to be able to experience it Mm -hmm. obviously like you said you can't explain it and i'm never gonna fully experience it until it actually happens but to kind of see you know like your posts on facebook and everything with the girls and now tage yeah <laughs> you know i mean yeah. it's uh it's cool to see yeah um, it is and you know kind of on a different light you mm -hmm. know when you had um your first child you yeah. know that was a challenging couple weeks for you because yeah. following having your first daughter your father passed away yeah. a couple weeks prior right and i mean shoot man that's i recently was just at a memorial for my uncle which i didn't really even know that well but right. just going to something like that really kind of puts everything in perspective and mm -hmm. seeing how my dad was at it and all that stuff and i mean i can only imagine going from the high of highs mm -hmm. of firstborn to you know uh dad passing away is yeah. you know one of the toughest losses that um what was that that time like you know obviously it's tough but what, sure. what do you how, now that it's been four years yeah. ago i'm yep. how do you reflect on it oh man it's uh you you know it, it's the hardest time of your life yeah um that piece of it you know um if it wasn't for like my faith in god and my wife like and I'm, and I'm being completely honest with you. I really don't know where I would be. Right. Um, I was down a really dark path. Yeah. Um, I was very depressed. I, I, I was questioning my faith. I, I just didn't know. I couldn't understand it. You yeah. Know? I mean, yeah. my dad was 53 years old. He wasn't the healthiest person, <laughs> yeah. you know, but he was an unbelievable dude. Yeah. And like, you know, you always are like, man, this guy's a, there's murderers. There's all these people yeah. that, you know you just your brain goes a different direction you know and you start thinking about like so much negative yeah. you know you don't really get to see the positive you know in it um i think you know god did it for a reason i mm -hmm. really do i think him you know for my dad to pass away after i mean my my daughter being born first there was a reason for it right you know because i don't know if i could handle the situation if it wasn't for my daughter right you know what i mean right. and it was for my dad, I think, because that's all he would talk about when my wife, Brianna, was pregnant. was like, I'm going to spoil her. I can't wait. Like, she's going to be, you know, the best thing in the world. Yeah. This is going to, you know, like, this is amazing, you know. And when, like you talked about, you go from, like, the ultimate high. Like, the whole, everyone in the family's excited. My mom's ecstatic. My brother, my sister's, because it's... Finally, we have a girl. My mom has, uh, you know, 10 grandkids. 
Um, and, you know, at the time there were no girls. Uh, and Charlotte, who came, was the first girl. Even my sister, she's all like, yes, like <laughs> finally, like we got a girl in the family, for Christ's sake. So <laughs> it was like, it was that ultimate high. Like yeah. I was like, felt like our family was on top of the world. Like, and then we talk about like, I, I, you know, I've said, I've posted about it a little bit and it's like that dramatic phone call you, you talk about. And yeah, we are having lunch with my mom and, and my wife and, and Charlotte and, we were, we were living in an apartment in Issaquah, uh, and then we went to the Ram restaurant, and um, I get a phone call from this random number, and um, we're walking back, and I, you know, I don't, I get a lot of random numbers calling me just yeah. because of, a you know, whether it's basketball or whatever, I don't really answer unless they leave a message, but for some reason, something was telling me to answer it, like, Ugh. and so I answer it, and it's, it's one of my dad's uh, worker's wife. Okay. Um and she just said, hey, you know, do you have a second? And I said, yeah, of course. Like, what's going on? You know, and she's like, I got terrible news. Your dad didn't come to work today. And my dad was the type that, like, no matter what, he was he was showing up. I gotcha. And he didn't come to work today. So we're all worried about him. So I went to his house. I was banging on the door. Nobody was answering. So they had called the cops. And then, you know, there he was. Damn. You know, and that, like drop me like i dropped to the yeah, floor like yeah. when i mean when i'm telling you like i was i i don't know what kept me like i i don't know what would have kept me on my feet like, right right i got that and i just fell and i just started crying like crazy I, there's there's not i can't really describe it you mm -hmm. know what i mean and when i fell to the floor it made me kind of realize that you know with life in general there's just you just can't take it for granted yeah. you know and it's and in a lot of ways it's again it's helped me become a better person a better coach and kind of really let me see you know that even if you do go through a dark path there's always a light at the end of the tunnel for sure know? and my wife who's incredible who helped me through the whole process she pretty much planned the funeral you know and going through that and then having the courage to like step up and having to speak at it, you know, and when you have to speak at your father's funeral yeah, man. and he's buried in, you know, this is it. Like it's over, yeah. you know, the, his body, yeah, not, yeah, his, yeah. not as, you know, it's weird cause his football number is 67. Okay. You know, that was his football number and I have his Jersey hung. I got it in my office and, um, he went to Renton high school and he was a, a real good athlete, whatever. And he, um, ever since he's passed away, it's weird. Like certain things is 67. Like uh -huh. it's weird. Like I had bought our first house in Monroe. Um, I would click on like the temperature, just click it on, you know, just randomly. Boom. It's 67. <laughs> like it's weird. Like yeah. temperature, like in, you know, the, the gas or yeah. whatever it yeah. is, you know what I mean? Like, I'll turn the car on and my thing, and I'm like, okay, I know for a fact it's summer. I mean, it's like winter, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I know my heat's cranked up, but for some reason I turn the car on and it's set. Boom, it's 67. Six. Like, So it's it's crazy. Like, it's, you know, I, I when you think about it, you're like, whoa, like, he's still here. Right, like, totally. He's still here, and that's what helps me kind of, you know, I wouldn't say get over it, but it helps me know that you know it's okay like yeah. death everyone goes through you know people handle it different ways and it's just kind of a it's it's just like everything man it's just it's crazy in life like just everything comes full circle like, right it just comes full circle like you know it's it's cool like you know it's not cool he's dead but it's cool that you know what you know the legacy that we can, you know, my father would always say, like, you're a cross and like, mm -hmm. you know, this is your last name. This is who you are. This is power. Like you're powerful. Like right. always know that, you know, install that. And it's funny cause I kind of install that. In the, I, st I, I do install it to my own kids. You know, my two daughters, my wife and I, what we do when they wake up every morning as they brush their teeth, we always sell, we always, they have to say in the mirror, like they say, I'm beautiful. I'm smart. I'm a champion. Jesus loves me. And today's going to be a great day. Like awesome. they say that every day. And that's kind of something my dad, we didn't say those things, mm -hmm. but like 
it's just that like hey you have that confidence like yeah. this is who you are man like and that's kind of something that i i think is just just powerful like if you can do it at a young age like you, you get that like it's just building that mind that we talk about like man just be as powerful as you can be but know that it takes so many people to help you with that you yeah know? so yeah it's it's cool that's all it's cool it's an unfortunate thing but being sure. able to find the positives in it is awesome and you said that you know it was your darkest of dark mm -hmm. you know lowest of low points and um you know was there you know the the support of the wife and everything was is huge but was do you remember something that kind of like really brought you out like any specific moment or mm -hmm. kind of switch of mentality that mm -hmm. like kind of okay life's gonna go on kind of mm -hmm. you know what 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 brought you out of that darkness yeah. um obviously my wife and my kids but mm -hmm. just like coaching really yeah like kind of finding that niche you know, or finding that passion you know you know obviously playing basketball is a passion but like it's like okay you know that's over with what can you do that can kind of fuel that you know passion to where you can help other people right and coaching was it i i fell in love with it you know when i was an assistant coach and all everything like that like i i don't think i was that great of a coach mm -hmm. i still don't think i'm that great of a coach like i just feel like every day you can learn from so many things and, yeah and we're all just going to keep getting better and i don't really feel like you're ever like a great coach you know what i mean because i feel like there's always so much to learn right and um if you're open to learning you just it's natural you just kind of get better as it goes yeah. um but that's kind of what drove me is when I, when you can put smiles on and you can connect, you know, and there's, you know, you might have an athlete that's going through the same thing as you did, or right. they might have lost their dad or mom or, you know, at an even younger age. So they're really going through it. So that's kind of really it is just the fact that you can help other kids, you know, become a better version of themselves. Yeah. So. No, I mean, I think that's, you know, probably a big part of the reason you are so successful i know you're saying you don't think you're that good a coach yeah. but i'd probably beg to differ yeah. and but just the you know like we've said is your experiences up to this point from mm -hmm. childhood kind of one half the east side one right. half puddle king and kent right you know to right. growing up and being the man in everything mm -hmm. to it the career being derailed from an injury that you can't control. Right. You know, it, it just a lot of, uh, you know, adversity for sure that led to adaptation, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so, I mean, for me, that's inspiring, you yeah. know, to, to just watch from afar and see the path that you've taken and, um, kind of jumping back a little bit mm -hmm. is, um, what, you know, with the injury, mm -hmm making you call it quits right. like what was the final point that you were like shit i can't do this anymore? yeah like what was the because i mean and i know how tough that probably had to be because For sure as athletes we tend to kind of wrap our identity up in our athletic ability mm -hmm. and us being the basketball player the football player the whatever and so then when you got to give that up it kind of can be some unsuredness and like Absolutely. well who am i and yeah. so but like what was the final point for you where you were like i just can't do this anymore and then the the results because of that yeah i was um i was playing at northwest yeah um and uh we were just got back from a road trip we had played in california um and we had just knocked off one of the top 25 teams we went to their place knocked them off and we had a Friday, Saturday game, we played Friday, then we played Saturday, and then, we, you know, you travel home. Okay. I think we traveled home that morning, next morning, Sunday morning. Well, the Friday night game, I could not feel my legs. Damn. So now, I mean, I'll just, every, so every game that I've ever played, whether what sport it was, I had trouble feeling my legs. Okay. And I had breakout and psoriasis, because I have arthritis. So I have yeah. arthritis, and it would kind of go through my skin, and then my armpits would be just like blotchy and my hips would be blotchy, red, kind of itchy type yeah. of thing. And um, so it was just like over the top. I couldn't do it anymore. Like I was just like, 
I was literally laying in our hotel room in the bedroom and I was just like, man, like, and I had been praying about this probably since I've been like a junior in high school, kind of like, okay, God, like I can feel my body really going down a way that it's going to end soon. Like, okay, just let me hang on to this thing for as long as I can, but let me know when it's over, like hint at me when it's over. And when I did that, it was it was pretty obvious. Like I, I couldn't move. There was not much help. So I had came back, went to the doctor and she was like, look, you know, you, the, I mean, it, it just bottom line, like I still need it done to this day. Like you, you need, just like you need hip replacements. Your hips are done. Like if you wanted to play again, you, you, it's not going to happen. Yeah. And then also it's more like there is, I kind of knew going into it. Okay. I had, my wife and I had talked about it, and I was like, "Look, I think this is it. Like, I'm pretty confident. Like this, this, you know, doctor's appointment. They're gonna tell me that this is uh, it. Okay. Like, I'm, I'm ready for it. Like, it sucks, but I'm ready for it. You know. And so I went in there, and they kind of examined me, and they said, like, "Yeah, if you want to play with your kids or do anything like that, you better stop playing, yeah. or you're gonna be in some real trouble." You know. So that was a no-brainer to me. Gotcha. You know, it was hard. Don't get me wrong. Like yeah. It, it's the second hardest thing I've ever had. Besides burying my dad, that's yeah. probably the second hardest thing I've ever had to deal with. For sure. Was that, like, no. Like, that hard no. <laughs> yeah. You can't do it when your whole life you've been doing it and doing it and doing it and just going. Even though they've been telling you, like, no, it's not a good idea to play sports, whatever. you just been doing it. But then when your body feels a toll and it's like, it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm that's when it's like boom like it it but i, I it was a i was you know it's just funny cuz i think everything happens for a reason you yeah. know and i think that me being at northwest was happened for a reason um because it's probably one of the i don't think you would ever get this at you know big time universities probably mm-hmm. you know because uh and maybe you would i'm not saying that you wouldn't but um when i had to get you know i had to go into my coaching out the coach's office and go in there and say hey you know doctor said this i can't play no more i'm really sorry you know they had you know spent whatever yeah lots of money on you and so you go in there you have to do that but then when i went into my team it was like a moment i'll never ever forget you know i told my team kind of everyone we weren't always emotional but it was really cool because i had you know like ryan mcintosh you know uh, michael green they were at the time, and I was a captain um, at the time, but they had just circled everybody up, and they just had a huge prayer for me. Like, everyone had, like I said, something like a prayer session, you know. Cool. And Northwest is a Christian university. It's a smaller school, and um, it was something I'll never forget because walking out of what's something that you've done your whole life, mm-hmm. it, like, was like, ooh, like, man, like. I don't think I would want it to end. Like, that's a really cool way to end it. Right. You know what I yeah, mean? Like, yeah, yeah, I didn't want it to go, like, injury, can't come back, you're fighting back, and you're trying to come back and just can't do it, right? It's like the way it ended, I couldn't, like, really ask for it any better. That's, so, that's cool. cool. You know, that's yeah. not, I mean, because, you know, that's even something I'm struggling, you know, yeah. I, I know eventually it's going to come, and, you know, the love for the game's still there, mm-hmm. but it, changes a little bit as i'm getting older here and there and it but just kind of think even though i don't necessarily think of myself you know only as a football player it i you know no matter what your identity is wrapped up a little bit in that yeah and so i mean how long did you take before you got into coaching after Mm -hmm. you were done playing it took me not very long just because we had EBC, you know. Uh, right. But to be honest, like, I was coaching, but I wasn't really a coach. You yeah. Know what I mean, yeah. like, I am I was still trying to, like, even though the doctor said no, and I had a I, – I did have, a like, a kind – of, my labrum was torn, and I was playing with a torn labrum and whatever. I, I didn't I, – I got that fixed. Yeah. But there was still that, like – I would go train like a little bit just to be like, can, I, can you come back, dude? Like, can you do this? Like, and it was just like, no, no way. There's no way. But I got into t- coaching that way. It took me probably three years to get over the fact that I was actually 
Dumb. not playing basketball yeah, yeah you know that's what I, mean? what I was gonna say is it, what like how yeah i, kn- I know you still probably For even sure. now i mean i know you got a good quarter in you you know oh, right yeah, i mean i got a, <laughs> I mean maybe five minutes you yeah know, but like <laughs> my mobility is so bad but i i i will play like you know especially if someone's like wants to like play one-on-one or something like <laughs> you might beat me but i'm still gonna compete against you yeah. dude like yeah <laughs> um so that compet like you talk about, right? That competitiveness, like it will never go away. No. Like it doesn't matter what it's in. So it's it took a couple years though. It took like <laughs> three years, I think, until I actually really finally got over it. So right. yeah. Sometimes like you said, I don't I don't know if I actually really am over it. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> Getting back into, you know, fatherhood and growing up with kids now in today's society and everything, mm-hmm. what I'm curious to know like what your views are with like screen time yeah, and you know, how you navigate that yeah. as a dad, like yeah. with, you know, kids growing up. I know my nephews, you know, they're older now, 10, 12, 12, 14, something like that, mm-hmm. where, I mean, when they can, they're locked for sure to the TVs. And so like what, what's your strategy right now is that with a parent? Because I don't think there's a right way and, no. you know, and so what, how do you maneuver yeah. that? It's, it's hard. It's really hard. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm not biased. Like my kids, they like TV. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's a good way. I mean, it's in, in a lot of ways, like when you need to get stuff done, <laughs> yeah. it's like your own little babysitter, you know, around the house. Like yeah. when you just want to like clean the house or get the dishes done, you know, you watch TV, but you know, our kids, we, we try to limit, you know, like an hour to two hours, you know, yeah. um, you know, you just, you manage it. You know, I wouldn't say, like you said, there isn't a right or a wrong way. I don't think, yeah. you know, I, I really don't. I think kids are different and, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I don't believe in like, like that being at a dinner table and sticking an right. iPad in front of them. Right. You know, we don't, we don't do anything like that, but, um, so I, that's, it's interesting, you know, it's different because when we grew up, I mean, there wasn't, TV was, you watch, you know, like your Disney shows, yeah. you know, your, you know. We didn't have it handheld uh-uh. like this, yeah. No, so it's it's definitely different, you know, and uh, it's kind of, it's it's challenging. Yeah. It's challenging. What would you say right now is the toughest part, most challenging part about being a father? I mean, besides mm-hmm. just balance, like we said yeah. before, but um like what what's the challenge yeah for you? I mean, that's a good question um boy for i mean for me right now it is kind of it is balance yeah and it is kind of being you know um anxi- anxiety in ways mm-hmm. you know um just figuring out like trust level as far as like what you let them do what you don't let them do um because when you know when I, I for for me like i was raised like kind of like free for all like <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. go ride your bike come home by six, five yeah you know what i mean like go do what you want and nowadays you can't it's it's scary right you know what i mean it's scary now and, and i'm sure it was scary i know it was scary for anybody back then too but um there's just too much access to information for sure that um that's the hard part you know i think that's the challenging part is like what do you, you know it's more just kind of what you believe in as a parent what you believe is right and kind of just kind of try it you know it's like <laughs> i'll try it like and if i mess up i just own up to it and yeah. try to fix it yeah. you know so that's probably the most challenging for me gotcha you know for our for for me yeah so <laughs> no i mean it's, I, it's and tough. with girls it's different too oh you yeah know, again yeah you know, exactly is, is it's where you it's probably a little more you feel a little more comfortable with telling the kid i just run around a boy run around mm-hmm. and you know it and there's challenges both ways but oh, yeah. just the way of thinking in today's society oh and, yeah and it's i always tell i always tell my wife brianna that the moment my daughter brings home her first boyfriend that i was gonna when we have dinner i'm gonna have at least two guns at the table <laughs> and i'm just gonna let them know like look hey you mess up, dude. This <laughs> I just need to put that fear in their yeah, eyes a yeah. little bit. Just to, I probably would never do that, but but I yeah, mean, I mean that's how you're that's playing. That's the purpose, I mean, right? If I were to do that, I'd probably be jail. So <laughs> no, and I, that's but what, you know. But I'm saying, um, 
it's it's that point you know you think about like you know it's just it's like you said it's this different it's way different between your daughter and your son it's yeah just, it's different no so. no that's funny is that was a question i was gonna ask is once they get to the dating age is how do you see daddy crossing as, we'll see. as a <laughs> we'll see i'll try to be you know both of uh, my wife's parents and my you know my parents yeah. were very good right like, really good right you know so they were very like open like not really what you know they watch you but it's not like putting like you can't do this can't do mm-hmm. it, 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 it. and it's kind of it's interesting because the way that you kind of some parents that parent that way their kids are fine mm-hmm. the ones that kind of are like try to like control their life in ways that's when they start to get in trouble for sure so it's 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 scary yeah it's like i don't know what the right answer is so so it's just like i said just go for it and see what happens really so yeah yeah we'll see we'll see i don't uh, know i'm I looking know. forward to following yeah. that one right we'll see <laughs> <laughs> we'll see great uh all right kind of jumping in or closing this off a little bit uh i just have a few questions that i'm gonna start yeah. asking pretty much every guest just to kind of get into the mental a little bit of this and first is like what's your you have a morning or a bedtime routine that you like that Mm kind of keeps you grounded yeah and so so what what is it yeah i've talked about it with the kids but yeah is there a a, just a solo yeah so every morning i get up around 6 6 20 um i give myself that 20 minute room just to kind of get up and (laughs) get my ass out of bed you know um so, right, you know, my routine is that I'll get up, I'll go right to the gym. There's a gym in our apartment. Okay. I go right there. I work out for about 30, 40 minutes, get back into the, get back into the room. And then, you know, I'll make myself like a, like a protein drink or something mm-hmm. like that. And, um, it, it's a keto drink right now. So my wife and I are trying to do this keto thing. Okay, so gotcha. we do the keto drink and then, um, from there, it's kind of getting the kids up, get them ready for school. We get them off to school, and then my wife and I will head to work. Okay. Um, so that's kind of a normal everyday type routine that we're in right now. Yeah. So it's you know that that's the that's the hard part of being a parent is finding that kind of not alone time, but that time where you just you just need to either work out or you need to you know, li- listen to a podcast yeah, you know, you, yeah. you know, or, you know, read a book, you know, something like that. So, and then at night it's just wrangling them. Oh to- yeah. Nights. I feel bad. I mean, you know, cause we don't, <laughs> my wife will get home a little sooner than I will, but I don't get home till usually like 10. Okay. So by that time either the kids are in bed or they're just getting ready to get okay. to bed. Um, or, you know, so it's, it's, it's crazy time. It's crazy time. My kids do not sleep, so it's hard to put them down. <laughs> I can't imagine. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you meditate or like, how's, uh, like visualization play, yeah. play a part in, in your life? Or? Yeah, I don't meditate, but I do, uh, visualize a lot. Yeah, I really do. Um, I write my goals down a lot. Yep. I do vision boards myself. Okay. Um, kind of see what, you know, just same thing as we were kids, you know, like writing all the stuff on, on posters and sticking them on your wall, you know, seeing all the, whether it's a NBA dude, that's a poster, you know, that kind of thing, you know, more my life has changed, right? It's now it's like coaches. I look up to you up to people. I look up to people I want to be, you know, that's kind of what mine's more of a vision thing. Gotcha. And that meditation. Gotcha. So. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, what is uh, one bad habit you're trying to break? Man, I would say um, it's like eating. Eating. eating yeah. For me, um, it's just trying to stay on the, whether I don't, I don't want to call keto like a diet. It's more trying to eat better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh, I don't really eat that well. So gotcha. it's trying to change that habit. Um, and, you know, and, and sugar, yeah. I know, um, not really, I'm not saying stay away from sugar, but right. just like, man, I just remember as kids, this eating everything and anything <laughs> and drinking soda and everything that's just not good for you. Yeah. You know, um, I've gotten pretty much away from soda, yeah. um, just all water, but it's a challenge. Like, don't, I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Like I have tons of cravings, like where I want a, a soda, yeah. you know, or I want, um, 
ice cream. Like What's your go to meal right now if if you're oh, on man. the keto fix? It's man, my my wife cooks like crazy. She's a hell of a cook. But the probably so she makes a couple. She makes a cauliflower mac and cheese. Ooh. It's really good. Um and then she makes a uh zucchini enchiladas. Mm. And those are like Man, those are top notch. Those are like that. That helps me. You know, you t- it's certain things that help you get through the day when you're tired. You know, and mine is like thinking about like, man, I can't wait for my wife to make that food because as <laughs> soon as I get home, I'm destroying that. Like, I can't wait to eat that food. So, it's yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty. It's challenging though. It's challenging. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, you know, we talked about this a little bit last time. Um, and I'm wondering if the answer will still be the same or if it's changed, but mm-hmm. like what's one book that if you had to recommend to anybody, um, to read? Yeah. It's it energy bus. Yeah. Okay. Still. Yeah. I, it's, I knew it's the energy bus. I think it's a, and easy who's it by again? John Gordon, John Gordon. That's yeah. Right. It's an easy, easy read. It's probably why I like it. I can't <laughs> read very well. So <laughs> Yeah, I just remember you being so, and I've been meaning to read it. I just haven't gotten it into the rotation. But yeah, no. It's, last time we got lunch, you were just like, yeah, you got to read. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It just it's a it's a very positive. You know, it just talks about you know, kind of like your own you, you as a person being your own bus, kind of people you would have on your bus, who you would kick off, um, and it breaks it down in kind of a a really nice way. Um, it, it just. It, it, I, I love it, so I think it's 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 my go to book right now for sure. Gotcha, gotcha. And then speaking, you know, we've talked a lot about, uh, you know, with talking about family and coaching and life yeah. in general. You know, um, something that I've been thinking a lot about lately and continue to think about is just kind of like what legacy you know I want to leave mm. and and um, if you could kind of touch on that thought process for yeah. you because I know that's a, a motivating factor for yourself yeah, and, and so what how do you uh w- first what kind of legacy do you want to leave yeah. and then also like how do you go about accomplishing that yeah I think really my legacy for myself is just more about other people mm-hmm. you know how many people can you know whether it's you know me or if it's someone that's either I've been coached by or I coached or been in our program like how can we you know empower it you know and mm-hmm. make it like this huge thing where I'm not saying everyone's on the same page or everyone needs to do exactly what you know I believe in but it's just more empowering people like yeah. that's the type of legacy I talk about like you know when I talk about like I don't care about wins and losses I like I mean that like you can't I believe you can't take those to your grave mm-hmm. you know you know when my time is here like I want a whole arena yeah you know at my funeral right like because of that's just the type of power or people that we've impacted yeah in life that's that's my that's my goal you know and and how i go about that is it's just you know i take every day an opportunity to get better yeah you know I, that's what i look at life as you know and we talk about relationships and you know everything is you know nothing's granted mm-hmm. you know but um if you can look at things, you know, you hear that motto, like win the day. I, I just, I love that motto. Like it, it's, it's, it, it flows perfectly with like taking every advantage of every opportunity because, you know, if you can take your goals and just piece them by like winning each day, yeah, you're going to get to your goal. Yeah. You know, how long it takes. Yeah. Sometimes it's longer, but you're going to get there eventually. But just piecing it together where like, all right, today, this is my goal. Like, this is what I want need to do. Like I want to impact this kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's kind of the way I, I go about it. Gotcha. What, what's the goal of today? Well, today, I mean, today's goal, I mean, it, to be honest with you is, is, is obviously impacting people, Yeah. you know, but I mean, it's just, it was to do this. Like yeah. this was my goal. Cool. Like this was my goal today. Like yeah. you've helped me become better and, you know, and you've got me out of my comfort zone. You know, it's like if you talked about it, it's 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 nerve. Sure, it's my first time like yeah. doing something like this. You know, it's it, and it, I couldn't ask for someone to do it better than you. Like it's cool. <laughs> it's really cool. So it, it's I'm just I'm thankful. Cool, I'm really thankful. So. Awesome, man. No, it's the mutual the appreciation is yeah. is definitely mutual. It's like 
hopefully, you know, next time we do this, I'll get the audio figured out a little <laughs> bit better from the start. I'm still just kicking myself over that right now. But I guess, you know, it's a little bit of our style, you know, and how we do stuff. We'll, we'll end up making it work. Um, but no, man, I'm, I'm glad. I'm super grateful that you wanted to be a part of this, you yeah. know, um, and, you know, looking forward to doing this again. Absolutely. Like I Absolutely. said in the beginning, I think that kind of the the idea of these podcast things even if this never blows up like when we're 60 it'll be cool to look back and be yeah. like yeah what were we talking about when we were 29 right you know and, right and so no i i like i said already you're a big inspiration and and someone i look up to in the the coaching and just life world in mm -hmm. general and so when i started doing this i was like yeah i gotta get nick on yeah, you know, yeah. like asap and so <laughs> uh yeah thanks for coming on man and no, I, I, I look forward to doing this again absolutely i appreciate it man it's uh I, I like i said i love what you do i think you're gonna you will blow this thing up i don't think it's a matter of like if it will i, yeah. I know it will well, um and it, it's it's just cool to see us come here full circle for sure you know to go from like seventh grade to now <laughs> yeah. and like you said it's it's pretty cool to see what everybody's doing, you know, and everyone's doing big things in their own ways. So it's it's cool, and I'm, I'm really thankful for this. I'm really thankful that you're doing this yeah. because you're, you're going to touch on so many people's lives, yeah. and you're going to hear so many different stories that's going to help everybody, yeah. and it's because of you that has the courage to do it. So I'm, I'm more excited for you because I think that you're going you're gonna to blow this up, and it's going to be cool to – be a very small piece of it and just to kind of see everybody's <laughs> stories is going to be the cool part so for sure i'm here for you man appreciate <laughs> you brother all, all right. right with that we'll call it a day all right man much love man yeah.